Welcome dear friends to Firefall 2020. Before I begin, I really want to thank each of you, my dear brothers and sisters, joining us, being with us these 40 days, being like a pilgrimage to know the Holy Spirit, believe the Holy Spirit, and now live in the Holy Spirit. So thank you so much for journeying with us. I'd like to ask you this question, dear brothers and sisters. What do you do when you need guidance in your life? What do you do if you want some information especially those moments when you have those critical decisions that you need to make. Where do you go to get your information? I'm sure you must have said Google. Yeah, that's the first thing that comes to our mind and I'm sure the whole globe does that. If you need direction and you need to reach a destination and if you're just like me when I'm bad with roads, you'll definitely depend on the GPS or any navigation system that will help you to reach your destination. Friends, today I'm going to speak to you about the Holy Spirit guides us. It seems today as if Google has become our conscience. We depend so much on internet, we depend so much on the World Wide Web for all our choices and our decisions. It may not seem so important to come to the Lord or even necessary to discern from the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong, friends. I'm not saying the, the digital world is wrong. It is bad. And we must not be so engaged with the digital world. Yes, we must, friends, but there is a line to be drawn. We must first seek the Lord. We must first seek the mind and the heart of God. He knows what's best for us. It could be our work. It could be our college. It could be a marriage partner. It could be in even the smallest simple decisions of our life, we must seek the Lord first. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 16 verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. A couple of verses just after that, in John chapter 16 verse 13, it tells us, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. Jesus himself assures us that the Holy Spirit is our guide and he will guide us into all truth. That is what is right and what is wrong. I love how St. Augustine tells us, pray as though everything depended on God, work as though everything depended on you. And this is so true what St. Augustine is saying. We give God his right place. There's nothing wrong with giving our best and working hard in researching or trying to find out what's best for us. But in our hearts, friends, we must know this, that God is the one who will direct our paths. And we must seek him with all our hearts and depend and trust in him that even while we are researching, his hand will guide us to meet our destination. That must be the disposition of our hearts. Friends, I'm going to share with you a couple of truth that the Spirit of God speaks to us of how he guides us. But today, friends, I'm also going to share with you a couple of my testimonies of how the Holy Spirit has guided me. And so that's what I want to do, friends. Because the Holy Spirit has always been guiding me. So here it is, the first point. The Holy Spirit will guide us. What do I mean by this? The Holy Spirit does not control us. It says very clearly, as Jesus has told us, the Holy Spirit will guide us. There's a big difference in this, my dear brothers and sisters. You see, I would really love that the Holy Spirit would control my decisions at times. We all face through temptations. Maybe that juncture where we come in the crossroads of life where we have to take an important decision. And at those moments, we would really feel, Holy Spirit, just take control of me and you make the decisions and just lead me and guide me. But that's not what the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit will only guide us. It is for us to seek the Holy Spirit. Friends, I'd like to give you this one principle that has been in my heart in my life and it has really made a profound effect on me. Every choice and decision I make will always lead to a direction. Every direction will always lead to a destination. Let me say that once again for you. Every choice and decision I make, it will always lead to a direction. That direction will always lead to a destination. 
If my choices and decisions are wrong or they are bad, they will lead into a direction and ultimately it will lead to a destination that is to my destruction. And so it's very important to seek the Lord who will lead me in my choices, will lead me to the path of direction and ultimately take me to that destination. The Holy Spirit wants to bless you and guide you. It could be in the small decisions of your life, my dear friends. It could be just maybe in your careers. It could be maybe in something that you choose to do. And so friends, we must depend on the Holy Spirit. He knows what's best for us. He is, he is a God who knows the end right from the beginning. When we stand at the beginning of the start line, we do not know what comes ahead. But the Holy Spirit knows and he knows what's best for you, friends. So I would want to encourage you, seek the Holy Spirit who wants to guide you. Jesus has said he has sent us the Holy Spirit for this main purpose to guide us. So seek and ask the Holy Spirit and you will be surprised how the Holy Spirit will guide you. The third is the Holy Spirit guides us to know our purpose. Friends, even as we continue to seek the Holy Spirit, as we begin to walk in our Christian journey, the Holy Spirit will reveal your gifts and your talents. Maybe as you are seeking the Lord, the Holy Spirit's desire is to make known the purpose that God has in mind for you and for me. And that's very important for us to discern as we begin to make those important choices in our lives. It could be our school, it could be our work, our marriage partner, or maybe some financial decisions could be any decision, friends. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us. When you look at the life of Jesus himself, Jesus also knew his purpose, why he came here on earth. And this is what Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You see, even Jesus knew his purpose and so must we, my dear brothers and sisters. He will continue to guide us every step of the way. Many years back, I felt the Holy Spirit also leading me and my family. We would cook extra food sometimes and we would go on the streets and we would you know, share that meal with some of the street children who were abandoned on the roads. And the Lord was doing something with my heart. I have never grown up, you know, reaching out to people on the street. But I think God was pointing his finger in an area in my life that I needed to change. And so we would continue to do this quite frequently. Cut the long story short, friends. We have been doing a lot of mission work today in, in some of the mission areas. We build schools and bore wells. We reach out to uh, the street children. But one of our pet projects right now is we have our own orphanage. We have our own two children, but we also have some of the other children who are with us and we live as one family. They are so precious to us. All of them, each of them are precious. And this is our desire. This is what Jesus has put on our hearts to love them, to bring his joy into their lives and to bring hope in their lives. And I see my entire family now having this purpose and this ministry as a vocation in our lives. God has a purpose and a vocation for each of your life my dear brothers and sisters. The last and the final one, the third point, friends, is the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Many today in our generation, they always think and they believe that the Holy Spirit does not speak. Probably it was at that time during the Acts of the Apostles. In today's modern world, I don't think so God speaks to me. But friends, I truly believe as the teaching of the church and as the scriptures scream aloud that God speaks to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. When we look at scripture in the book of Acts, we can see how clearly that the Holy Spirit was leading Peter and all the other apostles to take the right decisions. The Holy Spirit was guiding them every step of the way. Now, we can really see the gifts and charisms manifested in their lives and they raise the dead to life and they heal the sick. But friends, the Holy Spirit guided them. The same Holy Spirit dwells in you and in me. The same Holy Spirit, he wants to guide you just as he did at that time. And that's what he wants to do in your life as well. And this is what Pope Francis also tells us. Let us invoke the Holy Spirit each day. 
He guides us along the path of discipleship in Christ. Friends, I'd like to end now with this testimony. When my wife conceived with our first child, oh, we were so excited and we got thrilled not knowing it's a boy or a girl, but we bought everything possible and we changed our entire uh, surroundings with this excitement. And after quite some time, we realized that my wife had contacted German measles. Now, this virus, German measles, it will either murder the child or the child would be completely deformed. We had to make this hard choice because the doctors gave us an ultimatum that either we, we need to immediately abort this child. We had counseling morning and evening and people kept on telling us, you need to abort this child. And I was in such pressure because everyone would say, you need to abort this child because if you do not and the child dies in the womb, your wife may die. Oh, what pressure. In those difficult moments where I had to make that decision, friends, I would literally cling to the feet of Jesus during my prayer time. And I would ask the Lord, Lord, what am I supposed to do during this time? And I would sense this prompting of the Holy Spirit deep in my heart. And the Holy Spirit will always say, Lenny, the Lord is in control and he's doing something new. Trust in the Lord. And I thought that was something that I wanted to hear. But every time when I would pray, I would sense the same voice and as I would hear the same voice I would I would sense this peace and this hope that would uh, that would fill my heart we did discern with some of our elders and we shared what we were sensing in our hearts but at the same time we did what was also practical we took a second opinion from another doctor all the doctors were shocked to see the report and they all frightened us and it went on from couple of doctors as we went on you know, approaching them for a second opinion. But the time had come where we had to make this choice. And I really cried to the Lord, Lord, you have to help me and guide me. And during that time, we met one of the doctors and he said, oh, everything will be all right. We trusted in the Lord. And with his discernment, we said we will not abort this child. We knew that God is going to do something new. My wife had to go in labor one month before that. And so the doctors took all the precautions, that is the incubator and all the specialists waiting because they knew this is going to be a complicated case. They kept us ready also what to expect when the baby would be born. But in our hearts, we knew that the Lord is going to do something that we will boast about all the days of our lives. And so during the delivery, suddenly from inside, I could hear the sister saying, oh, it's a miracle, a miracle. And outside, because they did not allow me to be in, I was wondering what is really going on. And suddenly they bring out this chubby, beautiful girl. Friends, at that time, a premature baby was born fully matured as if in the ninth month. And this is the miracle of the Lord. Curly, long hair, chubby cheeks, looks just like the mother. And I say, praise God for that. And we know that this is a miracle of God. The doctors themselves, the nurses themselves said that this is a miracle baby. Everyone said about this child. Everyone said that uh, the baby will be deformed. But you see the hand of the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. He knows what's best for us. Naomi has grown so beautifully, intelligent, uh, so amazing in a personality, in a character and someone who loves the Lord. I can keep on sharing so many testimonies of how the Holy Spirit has been guiding me in the simple and the small things also in my life. But how do I encourage you friends? Just as we will seek for all the decisions in, in, our, in the digital world or in every other aspect of our lives, let us first seek the Lord. Let us first put our trust in the Lord because He is our guide. And the Holy Spirit wants to guide you and lead you to the purpose and plan that God has in store for us. May we bow our heads even as I lead you into a prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we want to thank you and praise you. Thank you for your word that strengthens us. Thank you for your word that encourages us and inspires us. Thank you for your word that guides us. We ask you, O Lord God, to guide us in every step of the way, in all our decisions and our choices, that we may seek you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. This is what we want to do, Lord God, to know your will, to know your purpose and glorify you in this life. Mama Mary, we ask for your intercession, just as you always glorified God through your decisions and choices 
as you were led by the Holy Spirit, as you were guided by the Holy Spirit, Mama Mary, pray for us that we too will be guided by the Holy Spirit. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst all women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen.